Is the Newton and the Apple story true? No. Was it a different fruit? <laughs> As a colleague of mine named Simon Schaffer in England once said on a Nova program that we were both on, the role of fruit in the history of science has been vastly exaggerated. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So was there any, I mean, to, to to zoom out, moments of epiphany? Is is there something to moments of epiphany? Or again, this is yeah. the paradigm shift versus the gradualism. Uh, there is a shift. Um, it's a much more complex one than that. And we, it, I'm, I, as it happens, a colleague of mine and I are writing a paper right now. Beautiful on one of the aspects of these things uh, based on the work that many of our colleagues have done over the last 30 and 40 years. Um, let me try and see if I could put it to you this way. Uh, Newton, until the early 1670s, uh, and probably really until a fair time after that, first of all, was not very interested in questions of motion he was working actually in alchemical relationships or what is called by historians chemistry, a kind of early modern chemical structure. Uh, colleagues of ours at Indiana have even reproduced the amalgams that, you know, anyway, um, his way of thinking about motion involved a certain set of relationships which was not conducive to any application that would yield computationally direct results uh, for things like planetary motions, which he wasn't terribly interested in anyway. Um, he enters a correspondence with his original nemesis, Robert Hooke. And Hooke says, well, have you ever thought about, and then Hooke tells him a certain way you might think about it. And when Newton hears that, he recognizes that there is a way to inject time that would enable him to solve certain problems. Uh, it's not that he that there was anything he thought before that was contrary to that way of thinking. It's just that that particular technical insight mm -hmm. was not something that, for a lot of reasons that are complex, had never occurred to him at all. And that set him a different way of thinking but to answer your question about the Apple business, which is always about, you know, gravity and the moon and all of yeah. that being, no. Um, the, the, re the reason there is that the idea that um, what goes on here in the neighborhood of the Earth and what goes on at the moon, let us say, remind the sun and the planets, uh, can be due to a direct relationship between the Earth, let's say, and the moon. Uh, is contrary uh, to fundamental beliefs held by many of the mechanical philosophers, as they're called at the time, in which everything has to involve at least a sequence of direct contacts. has to be something between here and there yes. that's involved. Uh, and uh, Hook, probably not thinking terribly deeply about it based on what he said, along with others, like the architect and mathematician Christopher Wren, uh, harken back to the notion that, well, maybe there is a kind of magnetic relationship between the moon and maybe the planets and the earth and gravity and so on. Vague, but establishing a direct connection somehow, however it's happening, forget about it. Newton wouldn't have cared about that if that's all they said, but it was when Hook mentioned this different way of thinking about the motion a way he could certainly have thought of because it does not contradict anything. Newton is a brilliant mathematician and he could see that you could suddenly start to do things with that mm. that you otherwise wouldn't. And this led eventually to another controversy with Hooke in which Hooke said, well, after Newton published his great Principia, I, I gave him how to do this. And then Newton, of course, got ticked off about that and said, well, listen to this. I did everything. And because he had a picayune little idea, he thinks he can take credit for it. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> so his ability to play with his ideas mathematically is what solidified the initial intuition that you could have. Was that the first time he was born the idea that you have action at a distance? That you can have 
forces without contact, which is another revolutionary idea? I would say that in the sense of dealing with the mechanics of force-like effects considered to act at some distance, it is novel uh, with both Hooke and Newton uh, at the time. The notion that two things might interact at a distance with one another without direct contact, that goes back to antiquity. Uh, only there it was thought of more as a sympathetic reaction, you know, to a magnet and, and, and a piece of iron. They have a kind of mutual sympathy for one another. 